the speaker. First of all, please allow me to congratulate the Honorable Dr. Ashni Singh, Senior Minister within the Office of the President with Responsibility for Finance, who delivered so eloquently Budget 2022, describing the PPP Civics vision for Guyana under the team steadfast against all challenges, resolute in building our one Guyana, sir. This budget is entrenched in the PPP Civic Manifesto. It's a promise kept to the Guyanese people withstanding who they are, where they are, or where they live. Mr. Speaker, as we forge ahead to implement the transformational agenda outlined in Budget 2022, we know there will be many challenges, but as a team, we are stronger together. We will stand resolute and we will work to build our one Guyana for every Guyanese. Mr. Speaker, I would also like to recognize the hard work of the staff at the Ministry of Finance and the staff from all governmental agencies across Guyana responsible for preparation of their agency's budget estimates. Mr. Speaker, I must rebut to a few half-truths, half-lies, and misleading information that has been peddled in this House in the last couple of days. Mr. Speaker, it boggles one's mind. Why would intelligent people who are elected officials in this country, who stand at the helm of 700 or 800,000 other people who look up to you and you come here telling these people, I am representing you, but in order for me to do that, I must lie. I must spin the truth. I must weave this concoction of information. Uh, did I hear lie earlier? You have to withdraw that. Sir, the concoction of the truth in our society is something that we ought not to do as legislators. Sir, we are people, when we walk in our communities, people look up to us and they look to us for leadership. When one does not read the budget presentation that was given to us in this beautifully uh, prepared documentation, one cannot blame ourselves for ignorance. Sir, if one reads the budget, one will see that there are going to be six new brand hospitals that will be built across this country. No Whom do you think that the six hospitals are going to serve? It is going to serve the ordinary man, woman, and child. It is going to serve the young and the old and in between. It is going to provide health care for all of us so we do not have to run to the Georgetown Public Hospital to see uh, medical help. Can we, how can we stand in this house or sit in this house and forget that we, that that APLU AFC government in 2015 2020 rented a house and paid $12.5 million. And when the time came, it was proven that not a single tablet was stored in that house. Check the amount of money it would have probably refurbished or built a couple new health centers around the country. Mr. Speaker, COVID cash grant given to every household in this country, yet a legislator come here and spin the truth and producing list that there are people who did not get the COVID cash grant, or why is the list doing in her hands, and why was this list not given to the Minister of Finance so it could have been fixed in a timely manner? Where is the truth in that? Where is the representation in that? That particular MP should not be in this house because they, they did not represent the people they're supposed to represent. 
and to spin this, sir, to make it look like it is a racial thing and only one kind of people are getting certain benefits and the other kind. Well, then you have, a, you have the right to go and tell your people all the benefits that is going to come out from this budget, let your, rep let your supporters don't take any. Sir, we stand here, we sat here again so many times and we heard about how much Linden has been left aside, discarded. Sir, well, I am surprised because if they had loved the Linden people so much, then they would have not allowed Rousseau to close its doors and thousands of workers would have been thrown on their uh, bread line. They would have not closed the call centers and they would have not thrown for about 400 uh, persons out of their jobs. We, Mr. Speaker, we love the people in Linden much more. And we will continue to work with the people in Linden. And the people in Linden is going to vote for us more and more come 2025. Linden. Mr. Speaker, this budget was labeled by so many names that, <laughs> and not one of them, were names that I want to repeat. But I want to say, sir, for four years, I was an MP, I was a legislator sitting in this parliament, and I, from 2016 downwards, sat and listened to Winston Jordan, the then Minister of Finance, present budgets. Mr. Speaker, you know the most important thing that was missing from the budgets? Women. Women, sir, 50% and over of this population in Guyana are women. And there was nothing in those budgets for women. And we called him out many, many times on it. Mr. Speaker, I declare today that the People's Progressive Party Civic is in the driver's seat of this government and it will take this country to prosperity. We promise that in our manifesto. Mr. Speaker, People have the audacity to come into this house after trying to rig an elections in front of local and international television, in front of local and tele um, international television, rig an elections, try to install a dictatorship. Well, Mr. Speaker, there is a democracy that is here and it is going to stay here and the people of this country is going to work very hard to make sure that dictatorship has, is never going to take hold of this, the reins of this country. Mr. Speaker, I would like to quote from the Honorable Minister and this is what he said. Budget 2022 is the third budget that this People's Progressive Party civic government is submitting to this Honorable House in its current term of office. It comes to this House merry eight months since the culmination of the epic struggle to defend democracy that was waged for five months following the unforgettable March 2020 elections. History now records it indelibly, that struggle to secure the triumph of democracy over dictatorship and safeguard the supremacy of the will of the people. Over 18 months that have elapsed since democracy prevailed, pessimism has been replaced by optimism, lethargy has made way for energy, superficiality has made way for substance and pomp, and pageantry have made way for humility and hard work. That is what the 33 people who are sitting here, sir, represent, humility and hard work. Mr. Speaker, Guyanese people are intelligent people. They can only be fooled some of the time, not all the time. Guyanese people realize that APNU AFC promises of a good life between 2015 and 2020 were a fallacy, sir. Can you remember that in the coalition 2018 budget, the Minister of Finance, after promising a good life, in all his previous budgets, told this House that he never said that APNU AFC will deliver the good life in the first five years in government. Mr. Speaker, that was a good life, not a promise of a good life. Mr. Speaker, budget 2022 heralds in a new era, 
the era of oil and gas. It's a pathway for development, for expansion, a pathway through which the plans and projections will transform Guyana beyond our imagination, and more importantly, sir, no taxes were imposed on the Guyanese people. Mr. Speaker, records show that the coalition increased salaries of public servants during its tenure. This was, a, this was welcomed by all, but sir, the more than 200 taxes and fees that were imposed on Guyanese took back those increases in a very sneaky manner. In reality, Guyanese were poorer. Sir, can you remember the 14% VAT imposed on all zero-rated items, such as stationery and school items, drugs and medical supplies, electricity, water, internet, and food? Sir, food. And whenever, when I think about the VAT on food, I get catapulted right back into the 80s when there was no food on the tables of people. When, you, when the police used to come and take your whole pot away when you cook potato curry because you have a wedding. That is what they want to have here again. It will never happen. Sir, no one was spared. Mothers paid 14% VAT on milk for their babies and 14% VAT on school supplies for their children. And worse than that, sir, Guyanese had to pay 14% VAT on drugs and medical supplies because they dared to get sick. Sir, can you imagine if we didn't remove VAT from medical supplies in this COVID um, environment in which we live? Sir, the PPP Civic in its 20 and 21 budgets restored taxes and fees to pre-2015 levels. Those budgets returned more than $50 billion in disposable income in the pockets of people, and 2022 budget continues in the same vein. Yes, Mr. Speaker, in 2021, because we care, the PPP civic government made a one-off cash grant of $250,000 to sugar workers who were callously discarded from their jobs like old rags by our new AFC. Mr. Speaker, everybody's groaning about that $250,000. Well, I would like to say this, sir, that for hundreds of years, Guyanese, the economy of Guyana stand on the back of sugar. And if we as taxpayers can reimburse some of that money into sugar to make it once again a viable entity, then I do not see the problem with that. Mr. Speaker, we all listen to the responses of sugar workers and their families. Did APNU AFC heard of their untold economic suffering? How they could not have sent their children to school? Did they ever look backwards to see how the men were emasculated when they couldn't provide their family with money, clothing, rent, medical, or any other thing? Did they do that, sir? Of course not. Mr. Speaker, all workers across the government structure received a 7% increase in salary retroactive to January 2021. And so further, the tax threshold was increased from 65 to $75,000. Sir, 2021, December month, workers got an increase, but you're not hearing them say anything that with the threshold, that the workers also got an increase in their wages because those taxes are now left in their pockets. Sir, when the People's Progressive Party made a promise, believe me, we will, ful we will fulfill it. We will not stand here and promise the people of a good life. We will work 24-7 to ensure that the people get a good life. That is what we will do. That's what we do. Sir, 
I would like to congratulate the ministers in the Ministry of Housing and Water for achieving the PPP Civic Manifesto target of 10,000 house lots in 2021. Mr. Speaker, many of those persons are busy applying for bank loans to build their dream homes. Mr. Speaker, I come from a family of construction people. And I'll tell you what they said to me. They said that it takes a minimum of five people to build a house three skilled workers and two laborers. Sir, I don't have to go far to do mathematics. I learned this in Prep A and Prep B. If I were to multiply 10,000 by five, the PPP already achieved 50,000 workers jobs for 2022. They already did that. And that is simple mathematics, multiplication. I will remember the simple math, however, is that you need an extension to conclude. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to ask for the Honourable Member to be given five minutes more to conclude our presentation. Thank you, Honourable Member. You may proceed. Thank you. Sir, because we care, the PPP Civic will fulfill its promises of the 50,000 house lots in the next three and a half years. Sir, all aspiring homeowners will be given a house lot. Sir, when we speak about infrastructure, our country, it will, about our country and its infrastructure, I can imagine that when I go overseas and I look at places and, and, I, and I admire it, I always look backward and I say, why can't my country look like that? Well, now I have a vision in my mind what my Guyana is going to look like in the near future. Sir, building roads and bridges will not only improve communication between and among hinterland and coastland communities, it will beautify our country. It will save time, and time, sir, is money. Spe Mr. Speaker, this investment will also create more jobs for our people. Sir, jobs created will put money in the pockets of our people, and uh, again, we will achieve more than those 50,000 jobs that we have uh, promised our people. Mr. Speaker, 2022 budget has a healthy sum allocated to the Ministry of Education. Every single parent I've spoken to so far, and this includes APNU AFC supporters, sir, welcome the increase in Because We Care cash grant and school uniform voucher which is now going to be 30,000 per child. Parents welcome the support of the textbooks in school for their children. Parents further welcome the proposal of the school feeding program, sir. When money is not spent by families to buy books and so on, mothers have more disposable income on hands to buy essentials for their families. Mr. Speaker, the section of our population that is most vulnerable are our elders. They give us life. They worked hard. They educate us and they made us into the people who we are. And they do not need much from us. They just need us to pay attention to them, offer them love and some time. Sir, my colleagues on the opposite side in the past few days made all kinds of representation for our elders and their needs. Mr. Speaker, I would like the pension of our elders to be increased too. But what happened to AFC, uh, APNU AFC in their, their five years of tenure? This is what they did, sir. And this is what I would like to remind the House. Sir, they callously took away the water and electricity subsidy from our elders. They forced our elders to pay 14% back on that water and electricity on top of everything. And sir, they imposed 14% back on the internet. So, many of our elders are internet savvy and they know to use the internet and they use the social media to keep contact with friends and families. And this they were robbed of, sir. Can you remember, sir, that this 14% VAT was also imposed on medicine and medical supplies? Our elders are people who use more medication than anybody else, and they went and put VAT on those medications, and they come here and talk about elders. Sir, 
The People's Progressive Party Civic has removed that 14% VAT on almost all those things that I, thought, I, thought I spoke about. And don't forget, sir, we gave the elders $25,000 for the Christmas, a one-off cash grant. Sir, I would like to say that I'm very pleased with the projection in our healthcare system. Sir, giving $600,000 to people who are on dialysis, sir, that's an ace. I want to commend the Minister of Finance. I want to commend the PPP civic government for keeping the people at heart of everything that they do, sir. Sir, the PPP civic government is known to remove hurdles from the path of women and girls. And since 1992, we have been doing it. We have passed some of the most modern legislation. We even changed the constitution of Guyana in 2001 to make sure that women can enter this assembly here. One third of the candidates on any list that contest the elections are women. Sir. Before I close, I must touch on the Gold Scholarship. So there was a time when we had to go to national service before we could get a, a tertiary education. Today, sir, the PPP civic government made it possible that a girl child can sit in her, the luxury of her home and she can be educated because the internet is available. And sir, that is what the People's Progressive Party Civic is all about. Sir, I commend this budget for approval by this house. Thank you very much.